Uh, Cannon is one of them, Rise is another. Um, so Osiris is a champion we've also seen sometimes being picked. Not too much success. Um, but obviously won't be available as he is banned away this time around. Rogue going for a very meta draft with both the Urgot and the Brawn, expecting Misfits to not first pick that Brawn. Yeah, the entirety of the draft so far has been pretty meta in terms of pick tier listing. And now we start to get into the meat and potatoes and things. Now we get into the juicy stuff, the stuff that has been seasoned with a little bit of Misfits spice, hopefully. What are they looking at right now? They, they could go for an early support if they wanted to. Gorilla has been playing a lot of Alistair recently. Ooh, that's probably going to be a Shen support. Really strong at early levels. That's pretty well into the Braum as well. Uh, and it does have the ability to be flexed towards the top side of the map. I have seen a couple of Shens be picked into the Urgot, especially during the World Championship. Uh, so they do have that flexibility option. And if they wanted to, uh, they could try and grab themselves their jungle right now. So Juani is up and available. Yep. I'd be very surprised if they go for the Scion right now. All right, they're going to do it. Yeah, that is a, that's interesting. I do really like the Shen support into Braum specifically because you can stop his concussive blows from landing with the very true. Spirit's Refuge. So I think that can be very powerful, but we'll have to keep our eyes down towards that bottom lane as the picks develop through pick and ban. I really don't like Caitlyn Braum. I really don't think the synergy is there. Yeah. Um, I much prefer this matchup. Yep, I think this is better. I think the Ezreal has a lot of survivability against the Lucian, and you're likely going to have to be uh, playing defensively in this 2v2 matchup anyway. Um, but to just very quickly go back to this Misfits draft, something I've been thinking a lot about is what is it that goes so wrong for Misfits? And outside of sure, sometimes they have struggles in the early laning phase. That's not really where their problem lies. The real problems lie when they actually get to these team fight stages and they need someone to pull the trigger. They need someone to actually start the fights for them. And uh, one of the things that I thought about was maybe if they put Soaz on just more engaged champions, he's a player that historically has always known when and been capable of starting fights and creating plays. And I think that by having him on a Scion, pairing it up with a Shen as well, means that Misfits actually have a very solid and reliable engage tool, oh, meaning they don't have to rely on Max Lord to do it. And when they have relied on him, I think that's where they've often faltered, especially in their game versus Splice. So perhaps it's not the strongest right now, Scion with his nerfs, uh, uh, definitely struggles a lot more against the Urgot. Perhaps overall, it will help with some of the issues that Misfits have been dealing with. So if that's what you're trying to do as Misfits, if you're saying we need a, a strong team fight initiator, we need a little bit of follow-up for it, how do you actually look for the rest of this draft? What are you looking for out of your mid laner and your jungler to round out this cohesive team comp? Well, I would look at something more utility-focused for Febivan, something perhaps like an Orianna. Um, could be very solid, but you all have to be careful about blind picking Oriana. Syndra is another potential one. She's obviously very high in damage, but I would expect Max Lord to be the secondary carry, something that he showcased a lot last year, and a position that he's often very comfortable on as well. You look at things like Lee Sin is currently up and available, fairly solid blind pick. Xin Zhao has kind of fallen off in terms of priority recently, but Nocturne is another big carry that not only synergizes very well with the Shen, but can also follow up on a lot of the engage tools that Sion can provide as well. So that's kind of where my head is at. At, but maybe they can also just trust in Febivan to be that extra bit of a carry. Um, and then they'll just put Max Thor up. Maybe they'll have three carries. I don't know. It's, it's, it's not rare. Have for as Misfits many carries as you want. Uh, it doesn't always work out, but we'll see how Misfits go through the rest of the draft phase. That's the corky pick for Senkux in the mid lane. Ezreal, double training force yeah. power spike. One of the most commonly said caster freezes. Uh, but all round, very solid comp. Um, we do say it time and time again. <laughs> yes, that we do. <laughs> uh, we saw Senkux on the Corky yesterday. Went 1-1-0 one, 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 on it. Uh, he played a relatively good game into uh, Abadage's Rise, but Rogue weren't really able to translate that Trinity Force power into anything in the other lanes. And now with the Rise lock-in, uh, Misfits, you know, it's, it's a bit of utility for Forbidden in the mid lane. That, that you've got the Rune Prism, but not right, to the same degree. Well. He's very solid in, uh, like, he offers team fight value, but sometimes it's difficult for him to get through that tanky front line. Uh, he does pretty well on the side lane. I think Corky can match him because he's likely going to be running the teleport as well. But I think they're just kind of two champions that will match each other. They'll scale relatively evenly. Arguably, Corky has better scaling because, you know, he builds crit. Um, however, so far, like, I quite like what Misfits has gone for. Very early game focused. They have a strong bot side of the map. They have the engage up towards the top side. Max always on early game jungler. And then for Rogue, they've gone much more towards the scaling aspect. Ezreal and Court. Woo! Okay. Ooh, ooh. Well, okay. They, they oh, Misfits the have the early game and Rogue are like, nah! Pantheon! <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Wow! Alright, we need our stats team to get on. When was the last time I'm on we it, saw Medius. When was I'm, the last time I'm we saw Googling. Pantheon in pro play even? I'm on it, you keep talking. I've right. got this one. So 
We'll talk a lot more when we actually get into game, but Pantheon, very early game focused. Lethality, he's really fast, he has a lot of mobility, uh, and he's basically all about just trying to gank a lot, a lot, a lot, and try and snowball lanes. I don't think these are the best lanes to try and snowball, but you know what? Kick is saying, I I'm gonna look to kill stuff. So I have quickly Googled, and this is not from the stats team, this is purely from my, okay, my own research. Okay. Dardoch in Rift Rivals 2018 played it for Echo Fox versus G2 Esports. And oh, I remember lost. that game. I remember that game. Yeah, they lost. Is that it? Yeah, because G2 played Funnel Kaiser. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. got a lot of early kills with that. Anyway, let's bring our attention back to that. Stats will hopefully be able to uh, help us out a little bit more than the last time we saw a Pantheon in pro play. I can guarantee you it's been a while. Um, but a Pantheon, this is going to be crazy. Exciting game. Rogue currently sitting at 0 and 9. They want to find themselves a win, and they're going to try and do it with the kick special. You know, he brought yep. out the, the Twisted Fate. He's brought out the Jungle Gnar. This man has Udyr. had all kinds of crazy picks over the years, and now he's adding another one to his uh, Even yesterday, he was playing the Jungle Poppy. He was one of the first guys to pick that here in EU. I remember talking to Yamato Cannon about it backstage. He trolled me a little bit, Yamato, in that interview. He said, oh, he said it was an accidental pick. It had been planned all along. It had been planned all along. But let's get on to the Summoner's Rift. It's Rogue up against Misfits. It's the start of the second half of the season for both these teams, and both coming off what would be a disappointing first nine games, I think we can uh, agree. I mean, yeah, I think that's a fair statement to make. As we mentioned, Misfits currently sitting on a 1-5 and five record over the last six games. Uh, and Rogue get to even find themselves a win. Um, but I quite like Rogue's... I mean... I liked their comp until the Pantheon. <laughs> Everything about it was actually very solid. I think it's got good scaling. Uh, you can play both team fight and you can play um, uh, one through one. Mm -hmm. uh, like it, you have solid laners. Like the only struggling lane you're going to have is in the bot side. But you have push up top. Mid is very even. And I'm like, okay, this actually looks very good. And they round things out with the Pantheon, who like he does. He falls off late game because he he has um, he has this problem where you can build him tanky but then he doesn't do anything he's just a tank that has one bombs. stun yep. um so you kind of have to build him full damage but then he's like really squishy so he dives into the enemy team and like you look at where else is the pantheon is your engage so he ults in and then he either kills everyone or he doesn't um so uh you gotta I, go hard or go home, Betty. I'll be honest, I'm not confident, but you know what? Pro players have proved me wrong before. Yes. So we've got to be optimistic. We'll see what Kickers can do with it. He is running the Baker skin. Um, I, yeah, it's the only skin you can really run on Pantheon. That's Dragon Slayer is pretty good as Actually, well. It's I really cool. Slayer. I like the Dragon Slayer. Um, but he's got some butter on the end of that knife, and he's looking to put some of the Misfits players to the sword as well. Let's have a quick talk about Misfits composition. You, we said they have a little bit engaged in terms of Scion running in. You've got the Shed and follow-up there as well. But in terms of like laning phase, past possible team fights, what are they looking to do? Well, I think uh, Misfits should try to play around bot side of the map. They could try and make some plays mid, but I think when you have Shen Lucian, uh, bot lane is the easiest one to play around. Uh, Soaz will be absolutely fine in the 1v1 top. He's just there to be an engage. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, again, Misfits, they don't need to force anything early on. It's just when the mid game comes around, um, once uh, both Lucian and Ryze have got their second item, they should really look to try and force something then and there. But they do have the ability to play the other game just because they do have this lease in a lot of lanes to, with setup as well. I mean, we talked about how Scion, you know, took a few nerfs recently, really struggles into the Urgot matchup because the Urgot hasn't actually received any changes on 9.3. Uh, but also, uh, I think Scion received some damage nerfs as well, which means it's way harder for him to clear the entire wave now. So if you fully channel a Q before, you could just kill the caster minions, but now that's not quite the case, which means that with less wave clear, it's even harder against an Urgot, who's not only ranged, but has pretty solid push as well. So that's kind of why the matchup got harder, but clearly a pro player is saying, you know what? He is still one of the best tanks in the game. The fact that he passively just gets HP from things dying, that's pretty cool. Uh, and he has a pretty solid engage with his ultimate. Uh, so that'll be good. Anyway, where's Kick is going to go? I want to know what he's ganking early, if anything. So Maxwell was spotted out on a ward as he came towards these Razor Beaks. They'll know he was on that side of the jungle. Uh, he's got a ward in towards the Razors of Rogue. So Kick is now going to walk across that. And it, it makes it very hard for Pantheon to gank when he's on vision because uh, you don't have a huge amount of gap closes apart from your W. And it's pretty the short range. The flash W is like uncounterable though. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's the classic solo Q special. Um, you know, I used to play a lot of Pantheon back in the day. He used to be one of my favorite solo Q junglers. Uh, and 
he's really, really, really strong at like a level 11. And once you have like your first, so you used to build, um, oh, was it called the Brutalizer? Brutalizer. Yes, it was Brutalizer, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you used to go Brutalizer first, which was 1337 gold. Um, and then once you got that item and you're like level 11 and then you upgraded to Yamu's Ghost Blade, you did so much damage. You did so much damage. Um, and then after that, you slowly take her off. <laughs> but no at damage. that point, you're like the strongest champion in the game. Um, and the really cool thing about him, for those that may not have seen much Pantheon, is uh, when you get low HP uh, past a certain threshold, his Q is guaranteed to crit, which means that you have a lot of execution damage, and, and it's really, really strong. That's when the enemy is low HP. The enemy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, my mistake. I believe it's below 40% it will crit. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Pantheon so. can do a lot of work. You do usually have to see him getting a few ganks off even before he hits that level 6 mark, but in professional play, I have to admit, I haven't seen a huge amount of Pantheon. Uh, and we'll have to see if he if he waits to level six or if he looks to try and catch out Max Thor, who is coming in for a little bit of an invade here. Uh, there is a Pantheon below. behind him. That's a flash. Kick is there. Max Thor. Here's the Q. Forbidden jumps in as well. Kick is with the follow up. Max Thor locked down and leaves the tower. One more flash isn't enough. Takes the tower shot and now kicks on the chase. Doesn't have the flash. Does have the chilling smite. There's the slow. No way away from Max Thor from Heartseeker. Strike. A final spear in the back. We'll get the first kill. And kick is his arrival just in the nick of time. Keeps Senkox alive. The clutch stun comes out. Max Thor can't secure that last hit, which means that Rogue walk away with first blood. Great stuff from this Rogue team. Yeah, great stuff all round. That's exactly what you needed if you are a rogue. Uh, if you are on the side of rogue, you know, Kicker's getting a counter gank out. I think you could argue Maxwell was perhaps a little bit too aggressive going for the tower. Well, you could see the play, on. but they just weren't expecting Kickers to just be walking down mid lane. Uh, you can see where they did have vision uh, on your minimap. There was one ward on the Raptors. There's one ward to the entrance to the walls. There was another ward that was on Gromp as well. So I feel like Misfits had a pretty solid information uh, oh, my mistake. No, they didn't. So he was just trying to make this dive happen. He saw Kick is way too late. They thought they could burst him as well. Uh, remember that Maxwell is running Electrocute, but I actually don't think he got that final hit off, which means that the Electrocute never propped, um, which meant that Kick is really, really clutch stun there, just in the nick of time. Just in case anyone was wondering, the last time a Pantheon won in one of the top five divisions, that's LCS, LCK, LMS, LPL, or in the LEC, okay. was 2017 Summer. Looper played it in the LCS, and we do count that as a win, mm -hmm. a, a top tier competition. Yes, played it for course. Echo Fox. Yeah, yeah. Huh. yeah. So it's been two years or so since we've seen a Pantheon actually win. A was it top lane or is it Looper? Uh, I, I believe it was. That's... Looper is a top lane. Or oh, it? it might be top lane actually. It might not be Jungle Pantheon. I feel like it Looper was, was top, top lane. It was top yeah. lane. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's been a while since we've seen a Jungle Panth. It's been a really long time. Anyway, uh, so far he's sitting at 1-0-0. Perfect start for oh, Pantheon. so good! 100% kill participation! Uh, you may see Boots of Mobility as well, just for the extra, like, zoomies. Um, <laughs> so you can set up those early kills. Is uh, that what you call them? Yeah, zoomies. The extra zoomies. Yeah, so when Pantheon is running at you, it's like when Jin procs his passive, he gets the zoomies, you know? <laughs> it's like, Nyom! you got to add the racing stripes as well, because he's just, he's flying. Oh, that reminded me of... Did you ever hear of Crazy Frog, Vedius? Crazy Frog, the yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. yeah, it was a craze in the UK for a period of time, and everyone either loved or hated that Hated, song. hated it. No. But it was also during the period of time where everyone was like, you know what, mobiles were developing, uh, and everyone was trying to get all these new ringtones and stuff, and either a lot of people would have that as their ringtone for their new flip phone that they recently acquired. Right. Yeah, not a craze I want to remember too fondly, but... Let's have a look at exactly how uh, Misfits are going to navigate the next little portion of this game. Because we talked about how, you know, they usually like to play through bot lane. They have this winning bot lane, or a powerful bot lane, in the, in the form of the Shen Lucian. Haven't been able to get a lead yet. EQ's actually backed, got a Sheen, has had to teleport back to the lane, but now leaves once again. So, although Misfits seem to have an advantage on the bottom side of the map, they're not actually translating it into any gold lead or a CS lead either. Well, I think... Uh the thing about the Lucian Ezreal matchup is uh, Ezreal typically does fine in Lucian because he okay. can just play safe and farm from a distance. The the difference though is it should be harder for Ezreal to proc his Kleptomancy stacks onto a Lucian. That makes sense. Um, because obviously he's constantly forced underneath his tower. Um, but what you'll actually see here, uh, we may get a good example of it, is when Hansom is trying to go for the tower, that's when Hiku's actually getting those Klepto stacks mm -hmm. and just kind of slowly pushing him away. Um, but it just gives props really to Hiku, saying the fact that he's been playing the lane pretty well. I don't yep. think Hansama and Gorilla haven't been playing to trade and to play aggressively, but they recognize, you know what, their jungler isn't offering a huge amount at this point in time. 
time. Yeah. Um, so th and they don't need to. They can just play safe. They can play defensively. Stacking up those tiers is way more important for the Ezreal. And for Misfits again, though, I think that mid game is really solid. Oh, Finn going for the kill here. Has the Fibby on death, just needs to connect. Stand United comes out alongside the Unstoppable Onslaught. So Zoas will run away. But Finn, after a disappointing performance yesterday, is looking a lot stronger today. It's the power of Urgot, my friend. He played Urgot yesterday as well. Though, the Eddie. power of Urgot. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is the, the second second helping of Urgot in your chefiest brew. Well, you've got to really remember... accelerates the flavors. That uh, yesterday was Finn's first day on the LEC stage, so I would imagine that he was a little bit nervous, didn't play as confidently as he would have before. Now, not only does he have a Pantheon jungle, which is very strong in terms mm. of being able to counter game. However, um, but I just think that he's not only, he's in a winning matchup, and maybe he just has a little bit more confidence. But he's definitely playing the lane better. Um, he's four sides back. He will also get the Shen ultimate out, which is great in terms of the early game playing potential. But now I want to see these Pantheon ganks uh, because, as we said, towards the later stages of the game, Pantheon will definitely fall off. His value is much harder to be implemented in these fights. And again, I think like I'm not surprised that we're seeing a super slow early game from the side of Misfits. Uh, I think that it's not the worst thing in the world. I don't think they need to snowball. I think that we just need to see once they've completed like item number one, maybe item number two, uh, they need to be actually forcing some plays. Yeah, it feels like they do have to take the initiative at some point. Because right. I look at both compositions and scaling-wise, Ubin is going to flash away from Kickers there with the Grand Skyfall. But scaling-wise, you know, you've got double AD carry yes. on the side of Rogue. You've got an Urgot frontline as well. That seems pretty strong. It is. It's super strong. Um, again, uh, Rogue's biggest issue is their lack of engage outside of the Pantheon ultimate. But we got... Ooh, I thought Gorilla might go for a dive there. Decided not to. Uh, and even though Hansama and Gorilla haven't built up a huge CS advantage, they have secured two plates, yep. which is definitely a big gold income towards that side of the map. Oh, it's and 320 gold, isn't it? They may even look to trade towards top side of the map as well as Max Hall looks to secure this Rift Herald. So I think both teams are, like, okay with how the game is playing out right now. As you said, Rogue have really good scaling, um, and Misfits uh, have a really strong mid game. So like, because neither of them rely on snowballing the early game, it's not the end of the world. And again, when you kind of look at a Pantheon comp, what you'd kind of think is, oh, Pantheon LeBlanc, and then Pantheon like, uh, Jace isn't the best example, but think of some top laner that's only really good in the early game. Like, those are the kind of conversations where Pantheon is to gank, gank, gank. Riven could be one example, yeah. Um, you're looking at kill lanes. Yes, but Rogue haven't drafted for that. So Kikis is like, meh. Yeah. <laughs> Kikis is just, like that. So, just farm. It's that solo queue teammate who's just like, well, I'm playing Pantheon no matter what. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can play scaling. I want to play Pantheon. Yeah. And and I mean, to be okay. fair, he used the ulti mid with a good roam from Vanda. Yep. Uh, and they get the, full, the flash out from Feverden. So now he has to play defensively because if Kikis ever comes mid lane, it's really easy for him to set up a gank. And Kikis' ulti is about to be available once again. So, yeah, Rogue looking pretty good. Uh, right now, the main reason that the goal gap is closing is because Misfits have been securing a lot of tower plates. Uh, and there's a bit of a CS advantage for Misfits in the top side of the map as well. I hear some ardent shouting on the screen. Maxwell goes in for the flash jump. Kick is biting onto it, though. There's the Stan United trying to get Maxwell down before the Gorilla can join. They take him out. And Misfits took the initiative, but Rogue take the kill. Here's the unstoppable onslaught. Soaz joining the fight. Senko still has the flash. Soaz now forced back underneath his tower. Misfits very much on the back foot as Rogue react to their plates. So that was an awful kick from uh, Max Law. Not entirely sure what he intended to do there because he not only burnt his flash, but he actually kicked the target out of Feverman's Q, so he lost a lot of his damage as well. And uh, the Shen ultimate didn't come on to him beforehand, it kind of came on reactively. And we'll just have a look here. So the goal here is to punish Kikis as he's trying to clear out a wall. And I think what Maxwell wanted to do was kick him over the wall so that he's right next to Feverman. But what he actually does is just kick him closer to Vanda. The Shen ultimate come out too late, and then Kikis can just jump on top of him and stun him because he still has his flash available to him. So uh, I think that was just a little too aggressive from the side of Max Thor, and once again, Kikis finds the punish. Yeah. And I think we've seen that a few times from Misfits in the last couple of weeks, where they, they know what to do. Like, this is a team of very strong players, but the coordination and those small micro decisions aren't actually working out for them. Uh, in the first couple of weeks, they seem to just be steamrolling everyone, but since then, one and five in their last six games, struggling to really have the impact of this roster and this uh, five, uh, set of five players should. 
So you can see that Rogue have an advantage in mid, they have an advantage in bot. Uh, top lane is very even, which is fine for them. So this scaling composition looking pretty good. And when we think about Rogue, um, a lot of their games, assuming they can get past the late game, often end up at this point in the game where they have to rely on scaling more. Oh, hang on, we have another gank cap top lane. The Baker's coming for a party here in the top lane. Pull back with the disdain, so it's underneath the tower, but pulled it with the fear beyond death, and Rogue get another kill. Is Pantheon making waves on Summoner's Rift? Yeah, great play there from Kikis. They do find another kill onto Soaz, but Misfits have the right set towards the bot side of the map. They have the Rift held. They'll likely be able to trade this for an objective, and I don't think Rogue will be able to get a tower. So the goal gap will close a little bit, but so far, Kikis making this Pantheon work. Now, Maxwell making a return to the mid lane. Seconds has the package and the flats. Caught up in the room prison. Maxwell goes in with the kick. Package comes away. Q does not connect, and Sankos will escape using just that single ability. Curious as to whether or not uh, Maxwell's Q is on cooldown before that. Ah, uh, yeah, it was. So he didn't actually have the Q available, which is why he didn't Q the moment he kicked. Yep. Um, otherwise, that would have been a kill. So can't blame Maxwell for that one, but I did like the kick that time. So fortunately for Senkix, he had the package, so he was able to get to safety. So coming up to the 15 minute mark, about a thousand gold lead for Rogue. We saw them yesterday have a pretty even early game as well, but let's have a look at where they are in terms of items. Senkux has that Trinity Force. We talked about that for the core key being a very powerful point. It's Iceborne Gauntlet first for Hiku, That's building fine. up towards the Man Immune next. Yeah, it's fine. It's not a Trinity Force. It's, it's not tons of damage, but <laughs> it's quite a lot of damage. Yeah, it's still very good. It, it, it's part of the, the, the old blue build from Ezreal that has kind of just continued, offers a fair amount of utility as well. Uh, Blade of the Rune King as well, with the Phage coming out from the side of Han Summer, so both him and Hiku are at pretty even states in the game, oh, but I would argue that the Lucian is just a bit stronger okay. uh, at this point in time. Now we see Hiku and Vander actually trying to get a 2v2 here, but Gorilla on the Shen, if he's able to land that taunt, that will be a lot of damage going on to them, so Hiku and Vander are forced to show that respect. That's something we often talk about with Shen specifically, is how you want to have proactive Shen ultimates. Ooh, uh, this is dangerous. And Maxwell jumps in. Sanko's coming in from the side as well. Kikus actually has a lot of damage down onto Maxwell. You can see the Stan United coming in. Gorilla flashes over with the taunt. Didn't actually connect onto Kikis. Kikis running away, but the chase will come in and Forbidden secures the kill. So, a couple of flashes had to be used from both Gorilla and Febivan, but Misfits do finally find their first kill of the game. It will mean that Hansam is in a one versus two, so Rogue's bot lane is going to continue to push up towards the top side, but Misfits doing what they can to trade objectives and build will make their way towards the uh, mountain. Yeah, mountain tricks are good for the team as well, you know, if you're looking for those objectives in the next 10, 15 minutes or so, it gives you so much of a bonus in terms of damage, and they will secure it. First dragon of the game for them, go pretty much even between between the two teams now as well. So let's take a look here. This is just Kikis trying to clear the vision. He's like, I'm fine. I have a Corky in mid who has priority right now and I have an Urgot who can make his way up. The one thing he didn't respect was the potential for a Shen. But Shen even misses the taunt. But then it looks like Kikis was almost expecting it. So he wanted yeah. to try and turn around. Maybe if I can jump onto Maxwell with my W, then I can just kill him and then I can trade one for one. Um, but he ends up getting collapsed upon by Febivan because Senkis gets forced back and he ends up losing his life. So, a bit unfortunate there for Kikis. Doesn't have his flash, will be coming up relatively soon. And he may look for a mid gank, actually, because, you know, there is no flash on Feverland. The ultimate is up for Kikis. And he has a couple of options. He could go on to Soaz, he could go on to Feverland. And you want to try and punish those flashless targets when you're playing that, uh, that champion. Finn flashed away towards this bottom side. Max was still just getting the damage in. Forbidden's on his way as well. It looks like Rogue being caught out. In the side lane, once again, Finn trying to do what he can, but Forbidden gets the kill. Grand Skyfall comes in in the top lane as Kikis is on the chase. Jumps forward, flash W. Hansama flashes away. Teleport comes in from Soas just to join this fight. Force back Rogue. The Unbreakable used by Vander just to eat up that culling. And Rogue with four members strong could go for the tower here. Instead, they're just going to back off towards the river. So Finn overextends in the bot side of the map. Uh, he didn't have a tower to play around, he didn't have vision uh, at all in the river, which means that it was a very easy kill for Misfits to find. Then, Rogue tried to make a cross-map play towards the top side of the map. You know, hey, if you're going to get a kill, then we're going to try and trade it for a tower. Uh, they almost ended up with a couple of kills going in their back pocket, but they couldn't quite convert it into anything, thanks to a TP coming in through from Soaz, which means that Misfits, they slowly gain a bit of control back on the map, but at the same time, they lost that top tier one. So. We can have a look back at how this one played out. You can see that Finn, he uh, 
I believe, yeah, he does have flash initially, but the moment he sees Max Floor, then it goes out. But he just realizes, oh no, I just used all my engage tools. And as you can see on the minimap, Ryze is already making his way down. He has no vision in the river. But at the same time, Senkix is making his way up. So they think, you know what? We're in a four versus two in this situation. Maybe we can find some kills. The Pantheon ults in. He tries to go for the flash onto the duo, but all they end up getting is a couple of summoner spells out and they can't convert it into anything outside of the town. And the thing for Finn is he's playing into a Righteous Glory Scion as well. So in a 1v1, yes, he should win that matchup anytime, but you're not getting away from him if you ever go for the engage and there's someone else from the Misfit squad there to catch on. We said we wanted to see a little bit of initiative, a little bit of proactivity from the Misfits after they got this first completed item. I think we've seen that, you know, they picked up a couple of kills. They're being a little bit more proactive on the map. Vander jumps in in the mid lane. Maxwell here with a flank, kicks him back. He goes straight into the team, flashes away, but can't get away from Biven, who has got all three kills for Misfits this game. Kick his jumps in, catches Gorilla, Finn with the fear beyond death will pull back the Shannon. It's a one for one trade in the mid lane. Really good kick from Maxwell to set up the initial play from Misfits, but Rogue with a stronger collapse allow them to get a one for one overall. No objectives are going to be traded for the time being as Drake is still two minutes away and Rogue, they don't have the wave to set up for a mid tier one. So ends up just being a couple kills going back and forth. It feels like both teams are just trying to make small forays into the enemy's base into the enemy's areas of vision, being like, oh, can we get a kill here? Can we do something here? Neither team really getting a huge amount out of it. Still only that thousand gold between the two of them coming up to that 20 minute mark. And we almost got to, you know, two completed items on this Corky, two completed items already on the Ezreal as well. If you're a Rogue fan, this is a pretty good position. Yeah, for I you. mean, if uh, Rogue look great right now in terms of how their comp plays out. Again, I'm still a little skeptical of this uh, of this Pantheon Cyan pick. Ultimate, yeah, I understand. No, the Cyan Ultimate was fine. He's forcing Senkix back, so as showing why Cyan is still a relevant tank and can just bully out a Corky. Uh, once he gets that Infinity Edge and Rapid Fire, that won't be as comfortable for Cyan yeah. anymore, um, but he's still a way off that, so so as feeling more than uh, confident. I do quite like these lane assignments as well. This is one of the great things about Corky. You can just send him off to a side lane because he can get to run to teleport, meaning that HQ can just sit in mid, who also has the teleport. So should Finn or Senkix use theirs, Hiku can act as just a, a side lane farm catcher and still can join the fray should uh, something occur on the map. Yeah, so kind of that 1-3-1 one, one that we alluded to earlier starting to be taken into effect by Rogue, but Misfits can you continue to try and just gain vision control of this river with Dragon up in about 30 seconds. It's only a cloud, but it's still something to put in your back pocket. There's a Baron up towards the top side as well, but they haven't really cleared out any vision in that river. So we'd like to see Misfits get a little bit more control just of their flanks, because otherwise they could quite easily be caught out. Rogue have really good vision set up around the boss side of the map right now. Misfit's going to make a cross map play towards the top. Yeah, Valkyrie from Senkins, but immediately just locked up underneath the tower, giving across to Forbidden once again. All of his team's kills sitting on the Rise's shoulders. We've been having a very good game with that Morello Nomicon and uh, Seraph's Embrace also, complete. Also note that Maxwell's been involved in every single one of those kills, so yep. while he has had a couple of misplays, while Rogue has been able to counter gank some of the things he's been trying to do, he's still been very active in setting up his mid laner with all of these kills. So now Feverman's in a prime position to be one of the big carries. Uh, going off into a side lane, given that he has two fully completed items, he should be able to bully around both Finn and Senkux at this point in time. So you'll notice how they'll just uh, rely on Febivan and put a lot of their vision around Febivan to make sure that he's safe. And you can already see right now, Febivan pushing in top. All of the control wards are towards the top side of the map. And this will allow him to secure another tower. So Misp is like, okay, we know where our strong player is. Let's make sure that he can just carry this game for us. We wondered if they play through bot when we came in to pick some bounds, but instead they're playing through their new mid laner. I say new, he's been playing for them for about five weeks or so, but still a new addition to the team. Uh, for Misfits this split. Teleport used in the mid lane by uh, Hans Summer. There's so many teleports in the game now, Vedius. I used to be able to just say, oh, who's got teleport on the team? It's definitely them using it, but there's so, there's so many of them. Yeah, so really unpredictable. Annoying. I'm really happy that no one in solo queue does it, because, I, I mean, when I bully my opponent out of lane, <laughs> I don't want them to TP back in. Oh, sorry, yeah. so you were being serious? Yeah, okay. I, yeah, I was. You know, the... <sighs> Playing Nocturne into Corky mid, I bully them all the time. Early levels, they think they can trade against me, and then they realize I can't. So uh, here's the problem with that. I played Nocturne into uh, Corky mid today. TP, TP used by Feverman. Trying to catch out for Biven. There's the Blast Gun as well, but he'll use it to get to safety. Vanderpont's pushing Fisher. He just jumps across the wall as well. Hans Sauer comes in from the side with the culling, just trying to dissuade Rogue from going for the engage, but they get onto Gorilla. Dodges away. Shenton across the wall. Kick is looking for the chase. Pull back! 
all the way into the meat grinder as Finn gets the kill and now the Baron on the cards for Rogue if they want it instead. Looks like they're gonna try and get mid priority. Now Rogue uh, were aiming to kill Feather then. Get that shut down, put Rise behind. Now they're looking for another fight in mid. All out so as he's forced to flash away. Lots of damage going on to Kikis as well, but Hiku doing a lot of work on this Ezreal. Can never discount the amount of damage an Ezreal can put out at this portion of the game. You can see how strong this 5v5 is from Rogue. They have so much poke available to them. They have a lot available in terms of the actual setup. And then they just keep harassing every time Misfits try to run away. And then out of nowhere, Kikis, he just dives on top of you. He'll land that stun and he'll find that opportunity to secure that kill. So here we can see Fervin just pushing in the side lane. The problem for him right now is that there's no pressure anywhere else on the map for Misfits, so they can't potentially trade his life for an objective, which means that they go for the collapse instead. And things look pretty promising. Sion isn't there and doesn't have teleport available, but then here comes the flash stun in from Kikis, and the CC is long enough to help damage Gorilla to help secure the final kill. So it ends up being one kill, but what did they have to invest for that? It cost them a teleport from their top laner, it cost them a flash from Kikis, and outside of that, it wasn't actually too much. They just couldn't turn it into any other objective. I actually think Kikis' smite, because he's got the chilling smite, was the damage that allowed the Fear Beyond Death to go off. That's pretty heads up play from Kikis, just to make sure that they could pull Gorilla back. Here's the ultimate coming up behind the tower, forcing away Hans Summer. Finn on the chase there. The Valkyrie comes out as well. The package locks up Hans Summer and Rogue. Dive between the towers to get the kill. So that's one thing we haven't talked about, but has to be respected with Pantheon. When you're setting up around a tower, you just ulti behind it, and it immediately forces the opposition to back, because they don't want to take that damage. It scales really well with AD, and then the follow-up from both the Urgot on the Braum is really solid, and now they have their eyes set on Maxwell. The Baron is alive, and he's not going to get away. Yeah, Maxwell has to try and dodge away from Vanda, but Vanda gets the final punch into Maxwell's back. And now Baron started by Rogue. Gorilla there to try and answer for Biven as well. He's very big. If he can get into this fight, he could do a lot of work. Soaz on the front line for Biven standing on a wall. Baron down to 8,000 HP. Rogue, so close you feel to uh, a victory in this game. If they can take down this Baron, they're, they're, they're going to get it. Misfits give it up. Rogue still have quite a way to go, but they are looking very, very strong here against Misfits. It's difficult to criticize Rogue for this game. They've made a lot of really good plays. While Kikis hasn't been like ganking left, right, and center, he's been counter ganking. Once he hit that level 11 mark, we talked about how you're really strong at that point in the game. Uh, once you've completed your first item, we saw a bunch of ultimates. And I feel like every time it's off cooldown, he's looking for a play. He's now level 13 on the Pantheon. He is at pretty much his, well, once he completes this next lethality item, you would imagine that it's gonna be the Ghost Blade for the extra bit of mobility. I would argue he's kind of at his strongest point and they're leveraging that power spike Rogue are forcing and now they've just secured a baron you can see how hard it is to get away from finn here as he just runs in with the righteous glory ghost yeah, i mean the chase down power from rogue is really really strong like the righteous glory you talked about it as well the path ultimate here it is again gets in behind the tower and once again it's hans summer who's isolated rogue pushing in with the baron buff already a 2000 gold advantage taken off it and misfits have to find a way to react they have to stop rogue because otherwise their inhibitor is just gonna fall i think it's just gonna fall medic they tried to split push with feathervan but right now rogue is too strong the misfits can't split up the map they have to group and rogue want that position senkuk's level 16 they found another pick so has caught out locked up with a concussive buzz he's dead and now it's a 5v3 rogue looking for the win it would be their first win of the lac and what a team to take it against as well this they're is onto the nexus towers this is huge for rogue they're onto it medic this could be it first nexus tower down maxwell backups trying to bend he and summer up in three seconds as well but already rogue have locked out gorilla but Biven just can't do anything and rogue come a knocking with the pantheon pick rogue take their first win of the LA Joy on the faces of this Rose squad, relief on the face of Senkux as they beat Misfit in 27 minutes.